you are walking in one of the most famous gardens in the world, the Royal Garden of Versailles. The gardens cover a mighty 800 hectare of land. The majority of the land is covered by finely landscaped woodland areas and several magnificent garden with classic French garden style. These gardens were founded by Louis XIII in 1632. However, many say that the real founder was his son, Louis XIV, as he was the one who laid the real foundation for the grand garden you can see today. In 1661, Louis XIV hired the best architects, painters and landscape designers to work on what would become his life's project the Chateau de Versailles and its magnificent gardens. In 1682, Louis XIV had his court moved from Paris to Versailles, making it the official royal palace of France. From this point on, Louis began an embellishment and expansion program at Versailles that would occupy his time and worries for the remainder of his reign. At this time, the expansion of the gardens followed the expansion of the chateau and each step was carefully managed under the king's directions. At some stages, Louis even put more focus on the gardens than on the chateau itself. Throughout the gardens, Louis had a clear theme with focus on the sun god Apollo and other solar imagery. This was due to the fact that Louis XIV related himself with the sun and was commonly known as the Sun King. With this, the gardens assumed the topographical and iconological design that would remain in force until the 18th century. The Sun King's successor, Louis XV, did not engage in the same costly building project as the prior ruler. The gardens only saw minor additions during his 60 years at the throne. However, during the reign of the following king, Louis XVI, the gardens underwent a major transformation as he also had a passion for spending money on Chateau de Versailles and its gardens. Several tree formations dating back to the era of the Sun King were changed and trees were felled and uprooted. This wasn't done of ill will, but rather a necessary step, as many of the trees were deceased or overgrown and needed to be replaced. Also, as the 17th century garden had fallen out of fashion, this replantation sought to establish a more up-to-date style in the gardens, a style that would also be less expensive to maintain. The majority of the gardens you can see today dates back to this era, even though minor replantations have taken place after the rule of Louis XVI, mainly due to natural wear and tear caused by, for example, storms and erosion. After the following French Revolution, some of the trees in the gardens were felled on order from the reigning National Convention. Sensing the potential threat to Versailles, as it had a strong connection to the monarchy the revolution sought to destroy, some prominent people convinced the National Convention to open the gardens for the public instead of destroying it. The suggestion was accepted, which likely saved the gardens from destruction. During the reign of Napoleon Bonaparte in early 19th century, Chateau de Versailles and its gardens were to a large extent ignored. Napoleon had more important things to worry about and cared little about architecture and gardening. Today, the gardens are everything but ignored. It is one of the most visited sites in France, with several million visitors each year. Both tourists and locals come to the gardens to experience the serenity and beauty it offers. The gardens, along with the chateau, were inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1979 and is today seen as one of the icons of France. Inside the gardens, 
you can admire more than 50 fountains, several statues of bronze and marble, and a multitude of beautiful tree formations. Or why not take a walk along the Grand Canal, reaching more than 1.5 kilometers into the vast gardens?